Okay, so this is the start of our unit three review for the diploma. Um, if you are doing the class right now during the COVID, then you're not writing a diploma, you're just writing a test from unit three, four, and five. Okay, the first questions that you'll see in these reviews um, typically are questions like this. These will not be on your unit three, four, five test. These are things that are, appear on your diploma exam. So it's kind of like little games, little questions. If you've been in class, you've heard me talk about these little game situations. The best way to do them is to just do them yourself. There's a whole bunch of them in your textbook. Every single one is different and has different strategies. So try your best, give it a shot. I've marked the answer for you. See if you can figure out why the answer is A. Okay, but we're just going to move on to the rational expressions part of this review. Rational expressions. So the first thing we learned in this um, rational expressions unit was that we learned something called non-permissible values. I referred to them as NPVs. Okay, non-permissible values. Actually, there shouldn't be an apostrophe. Non-permissible values are things or values that cause you to divide by zero. So for instance, if we look at this question over here, over here, if x were to equal three, what would happen when we put three into this denominator? Well, the top, we're just gonna ignore it for now, but the bottom would become three plus seven, three minus three. If we kept going with that, the top, we're just gonna ignore because we're only worried about dividing. This would become 10 times zero. And we learned that anything times zero is zero. So because one set of brackets turned into zero, the entire denominator turned into zero, and that is not allowed. That breaks like our math rules, right? And that's what a non-permissible value is. It's things that cause you to divide by zero. The way that we figured this out was by factoring it so that we had two binomials, and then we would figure out what made each binomial equal zero. In this case, if x were to equal negative seven or three, you'd be dividing by zero. So the non-personal values here would be x cannot equal negative seven or three. If you don't remember that, that's okay. We're gonna do a couple questions right now. Um, we're going to determine the non-permissible values. The first step to determine non-permissible values is to always factor. Now, we've taken out all the factoring questions because factoring trinomials actually isn't part of this course anymore. So this would actually appear like this on a question, on a test question. So you do not need to worry about um, factoring trinomials. They will always give you binomials, like always, 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 which is kind of nice. So we'll erase that question and write that as our new question. If you want to figure out that non-permissible value, what you need to do is take each set of brackets and say x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Take the other set of brackets and say x plus 2 cannot equal 0. And then for each one of those equations, get x by itself. So we would get x by itself in that blue equation by adding 3 to both sides. And that means my non-permissible values, x cannot equal 3. On the green side, if we were to subtract 2 from both sides, that would give me x cannot equal negative 2. And those would be the solutions for your non-permissible value. Cool. So if you look at this next one, if we wanted to figure out the non-permissible value, you would say x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. Right? You take the denominator, you say it can't equal 0. Then I try to get x by itself. So I'm going to get x squared cannot equal negative 1 because I subtracted 1 to the other side. Then I would try to square root. But you cannot square root negative numbers. So what this means is that this actually can't create a non-permissible value. We say there's no non-permissible values. 
It is possible that X could equal anything and you would never divide by zero. That's one of those scenarios. And that's because when I tried to solve for the non principal value, I ended up square rooting a negative, which isn't actually something that could happen. Cool. Example three. So example three, we have a binomial, but the first step to these questions is always to try to factor. And we can factor that binomial. When you factor it using difference of squares, so it means you square root the entire equation, you get x minus 3, and then you get x plus 3 when you do difference of squares. Okay, the way I got that is by square rooting it. So the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 9 is 3. So it turned into x minus 3. I also have to get the other one, the x plus 3, so I just write it again, but with a different middle symbol, and that will always work. Then just by inspecting, I can look at this and say, okay, well, x cannot equal positive or negative 3. If it was positive 3, it would make this set of brackets equal 0. If it was negative 3, it would make this set of brackets equal 0. Cool. This next question. Again, you would not be given that question because that's a trinomial in the denominator. So the question you would be given would be this, x minus 4, x minus 4. You will not have to factor trinomials to get your NPVs. Then I can just look at my two sets of brackets. I can realize they're the exact same equation, so I don't need to do it twice. I can just do it once. I move my 4 to the other side by adding 4, and I get x cannot equal 4. That's my non-permissible value. Wonderful. We have some questions here. We're going to try to simplify them. Uh, the way we simplify is we, we actually always follow three steps. So we're actually going to do the whole thing here. We're going to factor if possible. Uh, if we can't factor, we're going to move on to stating our NPVs. And then we're going to simplify. These early questions that we're doing on this slide are all monomials or something similar to that at the start. And then it gets progressively harder with binomials and trinomials later on on this slide. We'll start off with factoring. On this first question, you can't factor it because there's no additions or subtractions. So we can't factor. The second step is finding your non-permissible values by looking at your denominator. Well, my denominator is 35 times A times B. So if a were to equal 0, then I'd have 35 times 0, which would be 0. If b were to equal 0, I'd have 35 times a times 0, which would equal 0. So that means a and b cannot equal 0 because they are monomials. There's no additions or subtractions. When there's no additions or subtractions, I follow that rule. Wonderful. The next thing I want to do is I want to try to simplify this. When I'm simplifying monomials, meaning there's no additions or subtractions, then I just go numbers with numbers and letters with letters. So these two coefficients can simplify together. In my calculator, I can go negative 25 divided by 35 and hit enter and then math frac and it'll actually simplify those numbers for you. The way we do it mathematically is we figure out what number can divide into both of those and they can both divide by 5. If you divide them both by 5, the top becomes negative 5, and the bottom becomes 7. Awesome. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our next letters in the monomial. So I have a to the power of 3 on the top and a to the power of 1 on the bottom. There's two more on the top than there is on the bottom, so that would leave me with a to the power of 2 on the top. Looking at my b's, I have b squared on the top, b to the power of 5 on the bottom. There's three more b's on the bottom, so it's b to the power of 3 on the bottom. And then my last one is c. There are no c's in the bottom, so that means there's one more c on the top. That is your simplified expression. Awesome. The next question. The first step to every simplifying question is always to factor. I actually can factor this. I can take a greatest common factor or GCF out of the numerator. 6 and 12 can both be divided by 6, and x squared and x can both be divided by x. That leaves me with 1x plus 2. If factoring a GCF is confusing for you, um, you should go back and review factoring and do some practice on factoring. In the denominator, we just have 3x. 
Awesome. First step, factor, check. We're done. Second step is state your non-permissible values. Non-permissible values come from the denominator. If I look in the denominator, it's a monomial. It's just 3 times x. So the only value of x that would cause you to divide by 0 would be if x was 0. So I say x cannot equal 0. Step 3, simplify. We have a monomial on the top with the 6x. And then we have a monomial in the denominator with 3x. So those two things can simplify the same way that these monomials in the first question simplified. The 6 and the 3 would go together. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And the x and the x would go together and they would cancel each other out. The x plus 2 in the numerator, though, stays the way it is. So our simplified answer is 2 times 3. Oh, sorry, 2 times x plus 2. In the denominator, we no longer have anything because the 3 divided into the 6 and the x cancelled with the x. So there is no denominator anymore. Wonderful. This next question. Um, there's a trinomial on the bottom. So this is not a question you would get anymore. I just hope we haven't edited this file. Um, the question you would get on a test would be x squared minus 49. That's okay because it's a binomial. And the denominator, they would have already factored it for you to be x minus 7, x plus 2. So that's the question you would get on a test. First step. The first step to every question is to factor. I can factor this. So if I look in the numerator, I have x squared minus 49. That's a difference of squares. I could square root x squared and I can square root 49. So that would become x minus 7, x plus 7. In the denominator, I would have x minus 7, x plus 2. I can't factor either of those. Wonderful. The second step is to state your non-permissible values. Non-permissible values are values that cause you to divide by zero. If we look at this first set of brackets in the denominator, if I had x equals 7, 7 minus 7 would be 0, and that's not allowed. So I say x cannot equal 7. If I look at the second set of brackets, I have x plus 2. If x equaled negative 2, I would have negative 2 plus 2, which is 0, which is not allowed. So my non-permissible values would be x cannot equal 7 and negative 2. Your third step is to simplify. Now, when you're simplifying binomials, binomials can only cancel out other binomials. So if you look, this x minus 7 could only cancel out another x minus 7 if it was on the top, which we happen to have. So those x minus 7s cancel each other. The x plus 2 cannot cancel with the x plus 7 because those are different binomials. So my final answer is x plus 7 divided by x plus 2. The biggest mistake people typically make is they look at that answer and they want to cancel out those x's. You can't cancel out those x's because those x's are part of a binomial. They're part of a package. This x is stuck with this plus 7. So it can only cancel out other x plus 7s. The x in the denominator is stuck with the plus 2. So it can only cancel out other x plus 2s. So that's our final answer. Again, this last question has a trinomial on the top. You will not get trinomial questions. So it would already be factored for you. So it should be, it should be, uh, x minus 3 times 2x plus 1 in the numerator, and the denominator is allowed to stay as 9 minus x squared because it is a binomial. So that's the question you would get. The first step to every problem in this unit is to factor. You can factor this denominator. This denominator is a difference of squares. I could square root 9 and I can square root x squared. So this is x minus 3 2x plus 1 divided by the square root of 9 is 3 minus the square root of x squared is x. I also have another 3, but this time it's plus x, like that. The second step now is to figure what values of x would equal 0, right? The non-permissible values. Looking at this, in the first one, 
3 minus 3 would be 0, so that means x cannot equal 3. In the second one, 3 plus negative 3 would be 0, so negative 3 cannot be one of my values. Awesome. Now we're on to the simplify step. Simplifying means we cancel out entire binomials with entire binomials. This first binomial, x minus 3, looks very close to this second binomial, 3 minus x, but they're backwards. So what we want to do is reverse the order of the first one. The way we do that is by taking a GCF of negative 1 out front. And what that will do is it will change the symbols on the inside so that that becomes a negative x and a plus 3, which now these two binomials match up. They both have a positive 3. They both have a negative x. They can cancel out. And I now have a negative 1 out front times 2x plus 1 is still left over. And the denominator is 3 plus x still. And that would be your final answer. Typically, we don't see it written like that, though. Instead, we just see a negative, and they don't actually write the 1, and then 2x plus 1 like that. In the denominator, typically, we write letters first. So we could reorder that instead of to be positive 3 plus x. We could just write it as x plus 3. Both of these are the same answer. One is just written different than the other. Right? One's in a different format. Cool. That's simplifying rational expressions. Kind of like the base to this whole unit. Uh, most questions you have to end up doing that at some point or another. Awesome. The start of this, when we get to multiplying and dividing and then some adding and subtracting, is on the next video. So if you want to switch over to the next video on YouTube or the next video on the website, it'll take you through all of multiplying and dividing and a little bit of adding and a little bit of subtracting. And then there's a third video to finish it off. Take care of yourselves. I hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.